Welcome to the Great Plains Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website where you registered. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenters from the University of Oklahoma. Take it away. Hello, welcome everybody. I see that we have some quite a few students hopping on and perhaps some parents here today too. My name is Tristan Black and I am Associate Director of Admissions here at OU and I work in, um, in our office in Oklahoma up in the Tulsa area, the northeast part of the state. And with me today I have Christy Smeal um, who is sharing her screen to present with you um, and we are going to share some about OU and I'll let her introduce herself. Hi everyone, my name is Christy. I am the Assistant Director for Admissions and Recruitment at OU. Thank you, Tristan, for being here with me. Um, I am based in Kansas City, so I work with our students who are in the Kansas and Missouri areas. Um, and I wanna take a moment to um, let you grab my contact information uh, for my Kansas students. If you're an Oklahoma student, we will definitely have Tristan's information in the chat later or ways that you can connect with your admission counselor in your area. Um, we do want to let you know that uh, at OU, oh, sorry about that, um, it is a residential campus. Um, so one of the great things is that it is very compact. You're going to be able to get to your classes easily. You're going to be able to meet people easily. We are located in Norman, Oklahoma. Our students benefit from the proximity to the state capitol, which is located in Oklahoma City. Um, and we're about a two, two hours and 45 minutes from Wichita, um, five-ish hours from uh, Kansas City, four from Topeka, and then about seven and a half from St. Louis. Um, Oklahoma City also offers really great job opportunities and internship opportunities for our students. Um, so a lot of our students who come to OU, they opt to stay in Oklahoma to take advantage of those great opportunities. Along with that, um, Oklahoma has, Oklahoma City especially, has a great arts, culture, concerts, lifestyle that our students like to take advantage of. Um, so those are some of the things that you can expect from your time at OU. We are a tier one research institution, um, and our average class size is 32 students. Um, so you get the advantage of having small personal classes, especially as you move into your major. With more than 170 programs of study, there is something for every single student who attends OU. We have the National Weather Center on our South Campus, or highly ranked for performing arts. We have a student-run advertising company within our College of Journalism and a complete health sciences center. We really do have everything that students are looking for. When applying to OU, you can come in undecided and still finish in four years, which is a great advantage. Um, and in fact, most freshmen that start in University College, our Freshman Exploratory College, they will be there for a year for 24 credit hours before officially declaring a major at the end of their freshman year. We also offer study abroad opportunities in over 80 countries and 200 cities with two study centers located in Arezzo, Italy and one in Pueblo, Mexico. These give students the opportunity to study in other parts of the world while still being able to pay the same amount in tuition and fees as they would if they were on the Norman campus. We use a holistic review process for admission at OU which weighs your academic merits, extracurricular activities, admission essay, and letters of recommendation as predictors of academic success at OU. Effective for students applying for this upcoming fall and over the next five years, students will be able to apply test optional for admissions. OU will also use a super score for the ACT or SAT and allow students to self-report scores for admission and scholarship purposes. If you select to self-report your scores, you will need to send us an official score 
for us to verify before you are able to enroll in classes. Um, and making sure that you apply by our early action deadline offers you priority admission for merit-based scholarships, leadership and community awards, financial aid, and early access to housing and honors applications. I am a graduate of OU, Tristan is as well. So we are a wealth of knowledge when it comes to the experiences that you can have at OU. But I will personally tell you that OU is why so many students, whether they are residents or non-residents, choose to go to OU. For my students from the Kansas and Missouri areas, 400 students are going to are attending OU currently. So it lets you know that there's going to be a community um, involved student life, a great campus, involved Greek life experiences, numerous study abroad opportunities, and of course the chance to cheer on the Sooners at the Prairie Palace on the Prairie on Saturdays. So this is something that students are excited about. They want to be on our campus and we're excited to work with you all in the coming months and years. So if you have any questions, please let us know how, I can, how we can help. Also, you may have noticed that there's a little QR code in the corners of the pages. If you are interested in learning more about OU, please feel free to scan that code and that will take you to our mailing list. That is all I have. Thank you guys so much for joining us this evening. We're really excited you're here learning more about us. Thank you. Next, you'll be hearing from Garden City Community College. Hi guys, let me go ahead and get my presentation going. Okay. All right, so my name is Samantha Garcia and I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Garden City Community College. And I'm gonna to talk to you guys a little bit more about how to become a part of Buster Nation. So again, welcome to our session. My name is Samantha Garcia, like I said. Um, we also have Sydney Sassaman here, our Director of Admissions. So if you do have any questions, she'll be helping answer those in the Q&A. Um, and then we also have Kelsey Bradford, who is our Campus Tour Coordinator. So in today's presentation, I'm going to go ahead and go over our admissions process, cost of attendance and scholarships, degrees and certificates, athletics and activities, and residential life. So just a couple of facts about our institution. Um, we are in Southwest Kansas. The population of Garden City is about 26,000, and we are a community college. Um, I think we might be the only community college in this session, but we have about 2,600 students enrolled. Our student to faculty ratio is 16 to one. Um, we have about 48 different programs and majors on our campus, and we award about $1.5 million in scholarships every year. So on this slide, it just tells you a little bit more about what steps you have to complete to be ready for enrollment at our institution. We are in an open enrollment institution. So that means you don't need to have specific G, um, a specific GPA or ACT scores. Once you apply, you're accepted into our college. We do have different rates for tuition and fees. So for our Kansas students, it's $112 a credit hour. And for border state students, it's about 126. And, and then of course we do have out of state and international, and we also have online classes for students that aren't just ready to come to Garden City yet. So down below at the bottom is an estimated cost of attendance for a whole year at our institution. It does include tuition and fees, housing and meals, and you can see the totals there at the bottom. As I mentioned at the beginning, we do award about $1.5 million in scholarships every year. So we have a lot of different scholarship opportunities for students to take advantage of. Um, we have our general scholarship application that is based on academics. So based on your GPA, you can qualify for any of these amounts based by that um, GPA that you provide. We do have work study opportunities and all students can qualify for this. So if you are interested, just let us know um, and we'll get you into contact with those specific departments. And we also have athletic and activity club scholarships. So we highly recommend students to come and visit campus to get into contact and get to talk to those instructors or faculty that are in charge of those activities and an opportunity to get to talk to coaches as well. 
These are the different programs we have to offer on our campus. Like I said, we are a community college, so you can get your associate's degree with us and then transfer into a four-year school, or you can go through our technical programs and get your certificates or associate in applied science. If you do have any questions about that at all, um, feel free to send us a Q&A, um, or we can also send you more information via email. We do offer dual credit classes. So if we have any juniors here, you can take classes with us next year as a senior. Um, just contact your counselor and contact us and we'll go ahead and get you set up for that. And we also have online classes for students that are wanting to take a mix of both or just be fully online. And those are $150 a credit hour. Here's a list of our athletic programs. So we do have a little bit of everything. Um, we do have an esports team, which is pretty awesome. They are an NJCAA sport. Um, so if you are interested, you can get a scholarship for that. Over here, you can also see our student organizations and clubs. The ones with the asterisks do give scholarships to students by either taking an additional class or being involved in activities um, on campus and in the community. We do have residential life on campus. However, first time freshmen are not required to live on campus. The rates that you see here are for the entire year and it already includes your meal plan. So if you do have any questions or if you're interested in taking a look but can't come to campus, we do have an online virtual tour where you can take a look at all of these options. So come and see us. If you are interested, we are open for campus visits in person, but we're also doing virtual visits for any students that can't make it to campus just yet. Um, we highly recommend students to do this. Like I mentioned, you'll get to speak to different programs, athletic coaches, you'll go on a student-led campus tour, and you'll get to know more about our institution to see if Garden City is the right fit for you. Just lastly, before I finish up, I will mention that we are giving away a $500 scholarship to any students. Um, you'll be in the running to get a scholarship if you visit during March 22nd through the, 20, through the 31st. Um, if you visit one of the tech programs listed here, you'll be in the drawing. Um, and we do know that a lot of students, we do get a lot of students from like Oklahoma, Texas, or Colorado um, that come in from out of state to pursue these tech programs. So I kind of just wanted to mention that, but if you have any questions, you can contact Kelsey Bradford. Her contact information is below, or you can schedule your visit online. If you have any other questions, you can scan this QR code. It'll take you to an inquiry form where you can put more information that you'd like from us and we'll make sure we get into contact with you guys as soon as possible. So thank you so much for your time and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Next we'll be hearing from the University of Central Missouri. Hi everybody, I'm gonna go ahead and get my presentation started. So um, for those of you guys who are not familiar with the University of Central Missouri, uh, we are located in Warrensburg, Missouri. It's about an hour outside of the Kansas City area on the Missouri side. Um, we do have in-state tuition automatically for Kansas students or any student that borders the state of Missouri. Um, this is about the size of our campus. We are a mid-sized university. So um, everything you see there is gonna be more of the fun things to do on campus. We do have 14 different residence halls and a total student population of about 10,000 students between our undergrad and graduate students. Um, so some of the reasons why students choose UCM is um, especially because of our programs. So we have over 150 different degree programs to choose from. Um, some of our top five major areas are going to be education, business, nursing, aviation and criminal justice. Um, our motto is learning to a greater degree. And so all of our programs at UCM incorporate outside the classroom learning. Uh, so for example, with our aviation program, we have our own um, airport that is run by our campus or our criminal justice program. We have a um, police academy on our campus as well. Um, that's just kind of an example of some of those programs. For any student who is undecided, we have an open options program where you work with a career counselor um, your first semester and they kind of help you decide on a major as well. So that's a more unique program for us. Um, we do have a study abroad in Honors College for anybody interested in those. Um, obviously with COVID study abroad is um, more in the preparation phase for any students and it's not currently running. And then the Honors College is 
um, for those students that have an incoming ACT or GPA above a 25 and a 3.5. Um, another reason why students choose ESCM is our engaged campus. So if you're looking for a big school opportunity um, with a small school environment, UCM is a really good choice for that. I personally chose it. Um, I went there for my bachelor's and my master's degree. Um, it was a great experience for me. It's um, a really good learning community. There's a lot of special housing interest programs where you can live with people who are in the same major as you. And we're also voted the safest college campus in the state of Missouri recently. Um, I'll get into some of our student organizations. For almost every academic organization, there is a student club that goes with that. And so it's different from high school clubs, whereas these are more focused on um, what your career is going to look like in that, adding to your resume, adding to um, the options that you're going to have for going into your master's program if that's something you're wanting to do. Um, and then we also have our regular fun clubs as well. So um, we are division two for our athletics. Um, we have about 20 different athletic teams between men's and women's sports. And all of our sports games are free to get into. We are the first school for the state of Missouri that's public with an accredited counseling center. So what that means is we have an academic advising center. So they'll help you with um, going through your four-year plan. We have tutoring um, in over 70 different courses. And then um, we also have free mental health counseling and free career counseling as well. So it's all located in one place. Um, the big thing why uh, students end up choosing a school and end up choosing UCM is our affordability. So at the beginning of my presentation, I had mentioned that uh, Kansas students get in-state tuition. Um, so you guys will be paying that Missouri resident price right there. Um, under tuition and fees, that is going to be all the fun things you get to do on campus, all the support services you get. Um, that's going to be rolled into those general fees in that tuition. So that is based on 30 credit hours per semester or 15 per year. That is equivalent to about five classes that you guys would be taking per semester. Um, we roll our textbooks into the cost as an estimate. Um, that way it gives students a good idea of that additional cost that most students end up having to pay for. And then you can see the price of a residence hall in meal plan here too. So we include everything all in this category right here. So that comes out to about 18,000, 19,000 per year. Um, this is how we compare to other schools in terms of our tuition. Um, so our in-state tuition, um, once again, those Kansas students, you guys will be getting that Missouri resident price. Um, we have a lot of different options there in terms of scholarships as well. So we have automatic scholarships at UCM. We also have test optional admission currently. So if you are applying with a 2.75 GPA or higher, um, you do not need to take your ACT. So this has actually been updated recently and you will get an automatic thousand dollar scholarship every single year. If you do decide to take the ACT, that's where this chart will come in. And um, let's say you're one of those students that's really good at test taking, this is gonna um, come in handy for you. And then um, the UCM out of bounds state scholarship, that's where um, the in-state tuition comes in for Kansas students. So like I said, any state that borders the state of Missouri gets that in-state tuition. Um, also, we do have a dual credit scholarship. So any student that takes a dual credit class through UCM will also get a $1,000 scholarship. Um, we do have additional scholarship opportunities through UCM Scholarship Finder. Um, so those are foundation scholarships. Um, and then kind of last but not least, we have um, the community of Warrensburg. So I personally liked it because it's a college town setting, but um, there's just a lot of fun things to do in addition to that. So really nice community. Everybody comes together for all the football games. It's really um, kind of things all your attitude. I won't show that video because we don't have enough time, but steps to apply, it's super simple. Most of the time you just need to send in your transcript and there is no cost to apply right now. Um, that is my contact information. Thank you guys for attending. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Nebraska Wesleyan University. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to share my screen to show my presentation. So hopefully you can all see this. I'm going to, there we go. All right, so I too am an alum of Nebraska Wesleyan, like many of our other presenters are alumni of their institutions. So I think that that is really cool. 
Um, and at Nebraska Wesleyan, we really believe that we have the brightest minds living, working, and learning in our community. So I'm going to share a few things with Nebraska Wesleyan um, about Nebraska Wesleyan with you all. So we are located in Lincoln, Nebraska, which is the state capital of Nebraska. And it's a city of about 300,000 students when you include, or people when you include all the college students between Nebraska Wesleyan and um, the University of Nebraska. And we have several other smaller colleges and community colleges in the city as well. So it really is a great college town. Um, you know, we are located in a Big Ten college town uh, with the University of Nebraska just down the road from us. So it does really create a very fun and vibrant um, community that all of our students get to participate in. Um, since I'm talking about Nebraska, we also are, or sorry about Lincoln, we also are known as the Silicon Prairie or being within the Silicon Prairie. Um, so that just means that we have a lot of opportunities for students that are interested in going into things like business, entrepreneurship. Um, you know, we have a lot of innovation happening. For those of you that may be student athletes, we actually have the um, headquarters of Huddle right here in downtown Lincoln as well. So when you visit, you'll have to go for a cruise downtown and you can see that big headquarters for Huddle, which is also um, where a lot of our students do internship opportunities, which I'll touch on a little bit later as well. Um, and we actually have also been, um, we have been known as the happiest city according to Gallup. They've done some research on that and we've been known as the happiest city in the country and also the healthiest city in the country. And I think those two go hand in hand because Lincoln, um, it's a great place to live. The cost of living is good. Um, like I said, it's a very great place for students to go to college, but we also have a lot of outdoor activities with parks and um, bike paths and um, things of that nature, lakes and stuff like that. So there's a lot to do um, as well, which makes it fun. So a little bit more about Nebraska Wesleyan. We really believe that we're in the right city, but we're also the right school in the right city because we have you know, a bigger city, but we are a smaller um, university. So our student to faculty ratio is 11 to one. We have over 90 student groups and activities, which is very good for the size of our campus. Um, we have over 132 majors, minors, and pre-professional programs. We also have several graduate programs. You actually could get your MBA program in five years, um, starting as an undergraduate and then finishing up as a, as a master's student. We also have education, social work, and nursing for other master's programs and athletic training um, is coming up here in a couple of years as well. Um, and according to a big, a big uh, publication, the US News World Report, um, which I've seen a few other presentations reference, we are in the top 10% of regional universities. So uh, for all of you listening in Kansas, Missouri and Nebraska, um, that should be right up your alley here in the Midwest of schools to look at. So I wanna focus a little bit about personal attention. Our average class size is 16 students. So that just really means that your professors are gonna to get to know you very well and they're always gonna be available to you. Our professors, speaking of, um, they will be the ones that are teaching your classes. We do not have graduate assistants teaching you even though we do have graduate programs. And we really believe that um, that allows you to get the best expertise because the majority of our professors also have their PhD. Um, and speaking of professor, they also will serve as your academic advisor, which um, is very convenient because they go hand in hand in terms of advising you and teaching you. So they really will be getting you set up to um, take the right classes for your uh, major once you declare that and make sure that you graduate in four years, which we do have a commitment for every one of our students to graduate in four years. So very rarely do our students ever go beyond that. And some actually can graduate early if they come in with dual credits and, and AP um, credits as well. So that definitely is, is a possibility at Nebraska Wesleyan. And I wanna talk a little bit about affordability. So all of our students do receive financial aid. Um, and also because we have Nebraska and out-of-state students listening, as a private institution, we do not charge out-of-state tuition. So it's gonna cost the same upfront for any student watching today to come to Nebraska Wesleyan, whether you're in Nebraska or out-of-state um, because we are a private institution. And just within the past year, we have distributed $15 million in financial aid. So I think that that speaks a lot about how much we really give and provide to our students. And, and I always say too, you never really know how much you're gonna get until you apply and go through the process. We do have you know, a formula based on your GPA and test scores, which I'll touch on a little bit, but um, you know, depending on your personal situation, whether you're gonna fill out the FAFSA or not fill out the FAFSA, um, you know, whatever your case may be, that financial aid is always gonna be a little bit dependent upon your, 
uh, unique situation. So because of that reason, we do provide customized um, financial aid consultations for all of our students. So we actually use Zoom to get in touch with all of our families once you have your financial aid award and really walk you through it just to add that um, personal touch and, and make sure that you really understand the value that you're going to get. Um, so I think that's really important. So like I said, we do have some standards for um, uh, academics and that would be in the form of GPA and also in test scores. So the majority of our scholarships at Nebraska Wesleyan are going to be based on academics. And um, this is kind of our model here on the left hand side in terms of the annual amount of these scholarships and it could vary from year to year, but um, I also don't want you to think too much into the fact of if my GPA or my test score isn't, um, you know, one of these criteria that I won't get admitted. So I think that is something that's important because we also do have a holistic review process. And um, so that's just kind of a snapshot for you guys to have an idea of the academic standards and scholarships. And then finally, we do have experiential learning, which is very important. So I kind of touched on internships. That's a very important part of our curriculum research. All of our students have uh, the ability to do research, study abroad. We definitely have students studying abroad um, way above the national average and then service learning, which is kind of giving back to your community. So those are all things that our students are doing. Oh, can you still see my screen? Um, it is the end of your six minutes. Oh, okay. My bad. No, <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I'll put in some contact information. And next we'll be hearing from William Jewell College. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brian Jackson. I'm an admission counselor at William Jewell College, the critical thinking college. Um, and at William Jewell, we are critical thinkers in community pursuing meaningful lives. We're located in Liberty, Missouri, which is just about 15 minutes straight north of downtown Kansas City, um, just off of Interstate 35. And we were founded all the way back in 1849. So we've been around for over 170 years now. Um, and we really focus on a really very small supportive academic environment. At Jewel, we have just around 900 undergraduate students. We have about a 10 to one um, student to faculty ratio. Um, and our average class size is right around 16 students. Um, and that really allows us to have a very um, engaged students uh, with our professors and really leads to some fantastic outcomes. For our students, um, for the past five years, we've had over 99% placement rate for our students. Um, and at Jewel, we're also an Apple Distinguished School for things like access to technology for our students. And so all of our incoming students are outfitted with an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil that is yours to keep upon graduation. At Jewel, we have over 40 different majors and minor programs, including several pre-professional advisory programs and some dual degree programs. Um, some of our more well-known programs and more popular ones are nursing program, which is a direct entry nursing program. Um, a lot of our hard sciences, so like biology, chemistry, biochemistry, physics, psychological science for us, especially those who are on a pre-healthcare track, pre-med, pre-PT, pre-OT, um, all of our students in the sciences do at least two years of undergraduate research, uh, which is very, very unusual for undergraduate students to be able to engage in that amount of research. And it is original student led research um, that these students do. Uh, business and leadership is also a very popular program. Um, and all of those students within business leadership, communication, public relations, and even our theater programs um, do internships built into the curriculum during their time here. Um, we have the Oxbridge Honors Program, which is a very unique and very selective honors program. It's only kind in the country um, that includes uh, a full year of study, junior year um, at Oxford University. And Jewel, we also have the Honors Institute in Critical Thinking. And this idea of being the Critical Thinking College um, really stems from uh, our core curriculum. So we don't have a general education program of any sort that kind of takes up a lot of your classes that first year, first couple of years. Um, so our CTI or critical thought and inquiry core curriculum is spread out over your four years. 
and is really designed to be beneficial to every single student, regardless of what your major is, to develop critical thinking skills, problem solving, analysis, these skills that we think are going to um, serve students well, no matter what they're majoring in. Um, I like to kind of think of it, this little pie chart that I have on this slide is really kind of think of the classes that you're going to take over your four years at William Jewell into these three slots. Um, one of the slots is going to be that academic core curriculum. One of those slots is going to be whatever major you'd end up deciding on. And then you have a, a third almost of your total classes that are really up to you. So you can fill those with electives outside of your major. You can um, add a second major. Over half the students at Jewel are double majors and are still able to get done in four years and not overload their schedule. Um, a typical course load, four, 14 to 16 hours, which for Jewel is only about four classes as a majority of our full semester classes are four credit hours as opposed to three. Um, and very similar um, to the last school, um, all of our classes are also taught by faculty members and we have a, a faculty advising model. There's really a lot of ways to, to get involved on campus. Um, I always like to think the typical dual student is that student who is okay having that full schedule, very, very busy um, outside of whatever you're deciding to major in, whether that's um, athletics or an NCAA division two school, uh, whether that's performing arts, um, academic honorary societies, Greek life, um, there's tons of different ways for students to get involved on campus um, in many different ways. Um, including the Harriman Jewel series. That's a performing arts series that Jewel is the sponsor of, uh, the brief performers to the Kaufman Performing Arts Center in downtown Kansas City that Jewel students can get free tickets to. Um, at Jewel, we're a test optional institution. We've been a test optional institution for nearly a decade now. Um, so students can just need to submit their application. Um, it's available for free to fill out on our website. We're also members of the Common App and then submit their official transcripts in order to be reviewed for admission. Students are still welcome to submit ACT and SAT scores um, for separate scholarship consideration. And then I always recommend students completing the FAFSA and sending that to Jewel because we do have several need-based aid programs um, that are considered based on the FAFSA information. A um, little bit more information about tuition and scholarships. Starting this fall, um, we actually have a new tuition rate that is a significant um, reduction is 18360 per academic year, and that is for all full-time students, um, no in-state, out-of-state tuition. Um, scholarships that are available for students, we have separate merit scholarships based on GPA, and then again, if I, like I said, submitting those ACT or SAT scores. Um, we offer talent scholarships in music, theater, and for our debate, cheer, and dance team. Um, something pretty unique to Jewel, our music and theater awards are available to all students on campus, not just those majoring in music and theater. So if you want to keep participating in choir, band, orchestra, um, or theater, and still be able to get a scholarship for that, you have that option. Um, like I said, Jewel Access Grant, need-based awards, as well as Shape the Future Grant. Um, your admission team, um, like I said, my name is Brian Jackson, admission counselor, kind of work with students in the admission process. And then Jamie Jensen is our regional representative and she's kind of your first point of contact if you want to take down contact information. Um, we'd love to have you guys come visit campus. Um, individual visits Monday through Friday, or we have a, have a couple of um, Jewel Journey Days coming up in March and April. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from St. Louis University. All right, I'm gonna get my screen sharing action on. All right, hello everyone, welcome. I'm so excited to be with you here today. My name is Lainey Arnold, I use she, hers pronouns, and I'm one of the admission counselors here at St. Louis University, we call it SLU. I work specifically with students from the state of Nebraska, and then I have two other colleagues that work with students from Oklahoma and Kansas, but I'm very happy that you're here and I get to be here on their behalf as well. So we're gonna do a really fast and furious overview. There's a lot to cover. So first to kind of get our bearings, St. Louis University is a mid-sized Catholic Jesuit institution with over 8,000 undergraduate students. We are ranked as a top 50 Catholic school. We do have two campuses. Our main campus is located, I think quite obviously in St. Louis, Missouri. And we also have a sister campus in Madrid, Spain. We are the second oldest Jesuit university. We were founded in 1818, so over 200 years ago, and we are the first university west of the Mississippi. 
while we are technically classified as a metropolitan or an urban campus, we do have a more traditional campus feel. So what does it mean to be a Jesuit school? The Jesuits are the largest order within the Catholic faith and Catholic priests. What it means to be a Jesuit institution has to do with our philosophy of education. We believe in educating the whole person. We call this cura personalis. So we're trying to meet all of our students where they are academically, spiritually, socially, physically, and help you grow into the best version of yourself. We also have a really strong emphasis in social justice. We strive to be people that are for and with others. So really showing up with compassion, engaging with our community. And again, while we are Catholic, we are home to all faiths and non-faiths. So regardless of what your spiritual life looks like, you could definitely find a place here. Now, academically, we offer nearly 90 undergraduate programs. All of our programs and majors are direct entry. Some of our top hits, if you will, are physical therapy, biology, accounting, business, engineering, communication, nursing, flight science. Nursing, OT, and PT are direct entry only and have a really strict deadline of December 1st of your senior year of high school. So keep that in mind if you're interested in any of those programs. All of our majors have some sort of hands-on learning experience or learning opportunity, whether that's internships, clinicals, research. Students within our aerospace engineering utilize our two supersonic wind tunnels during their senior projects. Business students do internships throughout the city of St. Louis. We have nine Fortune 500 companies here in St. Louis, so they are doing internships with US Bank, Boeing, Edward Jones, and really kind of getting their feet wet in the business world. Students of nursing do 300 hours of clinicals starting their sophomore year, and we are a top research university. So we are one of nine Catholic universities that has received the Carnegie classification of higher or highest in research activity. So we really think that hands-on learning is allowing our students to really practice what you're learning in the classroom and figure out not only do you like what you're doing, are you good at it? Do you feel like you're fulfilling your purpose? Um, that's why we do these things. Uh, and obviously while hands-on learning has looked a little bit different in the time of COVID, we are really proud that our students have been able to successfully get through the entire first semester and we are getting through this next semester with a hybrid learning model. So they're still able to have those learning experiences. Now, outside of the classroom, we have 18 Division I sports. We have 30 club sports, 50 intramural programs. Um, so if you're a big sports person, you could paint yourself blue to go to some of the basketball games. But if you're not into athletics, we also have 150 other campus organizations and ways to get involved, whether that is fraternity sorority life, multicultural fraternities, whether that is service work and engaging in the community. Uh, like I said earlier, with our campus in Madrid, Spain, we also partner with programs all over the world. So a large percentage of our students, about 60% of our students study abroad at some point during their time at SLU. So very, very common for us. Now, hopefully I've got you hyped up on SLU and we can talk a little bit about how you become a Zillican. So the first step is that we need you to apply. Our application is totally free and you can find it either directly on our website or on the Common App. The Common App makes it super easy, so definitely check out that resource. We need your official high school transcript from your high school. If you're an international student, then we do require a you to demonstrate English proficiency. Everything listed under number four, you'll see are things that we recommend but are not required. So a resume, two letters of recommendation, potentially doing an interview with your admission counselor. So meeting on a virtual meeting with myself or one of my teammates to just get to know you and help figure out what you're passionate about, see if it's a good fit. Uh, and then you can see we are also test optional. So I always tell students, if you have a test score that you're proud of and you wanna share, then we wanna see it. But if you don't have a score or you don't feel like it reflects your academic ability, you do not need to send it. Also, December 1st is kind of a priority deadline. And we also have merit scholarships that range between eight and $25,000 per academic year which you will be considered for when you apply. So 
I would definitely encourage you to check out SLU, go onto our website, see some of our virtual or, or in-person visit opportunities at slu.edu backslash visit, and I'll drop my contact info in the chat. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. So we have a bit of time left to quickly do a Q&A question. So if all of the reps would like to come back on and just uh, answer, what advice would you give to someone going through the college search process? And uh, you can respond in the same order that you presented in. Uh, Tristan, you want to take this one? Yeah, I will go ahead. So, um, hey guys, it's Tristan from OU. I would say my biggest advice to, to a student who's starting the college search process is don't overthink it, especially at the beginning. There are going to be so many options and there's no right or wrong answer. It's just a matter of finding which college is the right fit for you. And that may not be where mom and dad want you to go. It may not be where your best friends are going, but it's important to do your research and figure out what your priorities are in this process. And don't don't be afraid to ask questions along the way. Um, so going off of that, I really think students should just take the time to visit campuses that they're interested in because you don't really know where you want to go or where, where you'll end up unless you actually visit the campus, talk to the students and instructors, and get a feel for that institution. So definitely visit campuses. Don't be afraid to ask questions like Tristan said, um, and just go for it. So. I'm going to second that um, with visiting campus. I know it's more difficult to do that, especially if you're not uh, close to that campus or with COVID restrictions going on, but I've noticed a lot of colleges are doing a virtual aspect of their visits. So I would encourage students to take advantage of that since it's an option. Yeah, my advice would be not to be scared of the price tag because a lot of colleges can look expensive up front. But as I was saying in my presentation, you never really know what it's going to cost until you go through that process and work with your admissions counselor. And um, even then, I know that we're all pulling for you and rooting for you and trying to help you find other resources, whether it's outside scholarships um, or any other ways that you can make it more affordable. Uh, similar to some of the answers that have already been given, I think it's important to really keep an open mind um, during the search process. Don't walk on to that first college that you maybe heard from your freshman year and set your sights on that. Um, I would also say when you're visiting schools, try and visit um, really diverse set of colleges. Um, I would say visit a school like a William Jewell that has a thousand students, visit a school like a UCM that has 10,000 students, visit a school like OU that has 20,000 plus students and really um, kind of get an idea of what feels best to you, where you feel most at home. And you're going to kind of know it, I think, once you kind of set foot on campus, which place is going to be the right one for you. I feel like my colleagues have really knocked it out of the park here. So I'm trying to dig for something more, more unique to share. Um, I think one thing that I like to share to help students through this process that can feel super overwhelming is to really encourage you all to come up with your board of directors, if you will. These are people in your life that are champion, championing you and really encouraging you and keep it pretty select. You don't need every single one of your best friends or your entire football team to be on your board of directors. You need just a couple people that really you trust them and they want what's best for you to be that person that you're kind of bouncing ideas off of. You still love your football team. You still love all your friends but where your best friend goes doesn't need to be the same place as you do. Awesome. Thank you all for sharing and thank you for presenting. Um, when you go to close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. Also, this was just one of many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for additional sessions. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other sessions recordings online at the same website where you registered. So thanks again, everyone. Bye.